Hi guys, in today's tutorial we're going to be covering custom depth and how you can render objects through other objects like you can see on screen now. You can see the box and you can see the player despite the fact that there is a wall in the way. Okay, So this is what we're going to be covering today. As you can see, if we run around in real time you can see it. I've got him a bit too low, you'll notice he's in the floor. So you can see it works in real time. It's actually very simple. So let's hop on over to a new project, put it together. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and create a material. I'm going to call this custom depth draw underscore M. I'm going to open this up. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a post process material. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to determine what it is that we're going to be be drawing. So we're going to need some scene textures. Okay, now with this node, you'll start with a scene texture, scene color. In the left hand side you have a drop down and you can change this. So what we're going to be using is a custom depth, there it is. And we're going to need another one of these, but in the second one we're going to change this to scene depth. Now from the color node we will component mask the red channel for both and then we are going to subtract these away from each other so they're being compared so what the custom depth does is it allows us to place any object into a custom render depth so Say if we pick our guy and we go into his search bar, type in custom, you can see here we have render custom depth. If we turn this on, then he's being rendered in custom depth, which means that if we go to our view mode, buffer visualization, and we go to custom depth, you'll notice that everything is black except for our guy. Now, the closer we get to something, the darker it will get, and the further away we get, the lighter it will get. If we change this to scene depth, it will affect everything. So, essentially, what we're doing so far here is we're taking what's inside the custom depth, which is just our guy, and removing him from the scene depth, or rather, yeah, we're removing him from the scene depth so that we're just getting just him and not the rest. So it's recognizing that he's not part of the scene depth anymore because he's in custom and we've removed him. So let's just turn this back to normal. What we're going to do now is we're going to create an if And we're going to use this as our A value. And as it's grayscale, it's picking a value between 0 and 1 because black and white are 0 and 1. What we're going to do is we're going to create some constants. I'm going to use three of them here. So we're going to place 0 into B, which is black I believe. Is that bringing this? Yes. So 0 is black, 1 is white, and then we're going to change the second one to a 1 and place this in A greater than B and A equals B. No, rather just to A greater than B. And then if A equals B and or A less than B is 0, then 
it won't draw. So basically, it's checking things. So a is a value of our custom depth removed from the scene depth. Anything here that isn't black will be drawn. Okay. So now the reason we do anything that isn't black is because if we go back into our buffer visualization and go back to our custom depth, no matter how close you get to the guy, he will never be pure black because he's part of the the custom depth render. But you'll notice everything else is just black. So basically with the if statement we're saying if it if it's black don't affect it with this material and if it's not black then do affect it so this is how we're determining what's drawn so we're gonna we're just gonna call this draw mask now to do this I highlight it and then press C for a comment box <clears throat> so next what we're going to do is we're going to take the mask from our custom depth and we're going to add this we're going to put that in the B hold S for a scalar place this into the A we're going to call this range and we're going to set this to a default value of 1 million which seems like quite a lot but basically what our range is going to do is it's going to tell us how far away we're still going to see what we're what we're drawing um, if it's too low then you'll only see these objects up close if it's too high then they're just going to be a dot in their distance so this is why we turn this into a scalar so that you can change this dynamically for your project so that you can customize how far away you want this to be able to be drawn um, but we can cover that a little bit more uh, in a short while because you might not need to draw it very far away at all. Um, so next what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to divide it okay and next we're going to just multiply this we're going to change the B value to a 2. And we're just going to floor this. Which means that it cannot go below 0. And now we're going to multiply this. We're going to multiply this by a scalar, so hold S and left click. This is going to be our alpha. We'll call it well. We'll call it alpha. It's not actually our alpha, but this is going to determine how visible it is. So we'll put that 0.5. Now we'll just drag this forward a little bit. We're going to take this floor. We're going to multiply this by our if statement. So now we're adding our range to our draw through the multiply. Now we're going to clamp this out because we need it to be a value between 0 and 1 because black and white. Now hold M and left click. We're going to multiply these two values together so that our alpha node is affecting how it looks at the end. And now we're just going to clamp this again because by multiplying them we might go above 1 or below 0. We don't want that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create another scene texture node. This one is going to be post process 0. We're going to, well, I won't do that yet, because I can tell you why. Hold 3 and left click for a 3 vector. 
we'll right click this and we'll convert it to a parameter and we're going to call this color now we're going to choose a color i'm going to go with a nice green now we need to alert we're going to put our clamp into the alpha because this is the mask all of this is the mask we're going to put the color into our b and the post process zero into the A. Plug this into the emissive color. And this is where we get our error. Now the reason that we get an error is because we don't need all of this. We're gonna component mask just the RGB because we're already getting an extra alpha so we're not using the alpha from these. Now if we apply it should work. We'll close this down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our post process value. We're going to go to blendables and here under blendables you have an array. Add an array under choose asset reference and now we're just going to right click our material create a material instance. Just quickly open this up. We're going to want to turn these on and now we will place it into our blendable. Now you'll notice that nothing has changed, but the eagle eyed, you can see the guy's little green footsies. Right, so the reason that he's got green is because he's part of the mask. So if we choose this cube and we type in custom, we can tick it, and now our cube is part of the custom render pass as well. So now we can run around. Now you'll notice that there's a little bit of green in the floor. It's because it's ever so slightly clipping through. So it just needs to be lifted a bit. But there we have it. There is a way to do this with an outline as well, but it's an incredibly expensive process. Uh, what it would basically do is it would get the things inside the the custom depth, it would find a pixel, so for every pixel it would then compare the pixels around it and then around those and around those and around those until it finds black and as soon as it finds pure black it will draw the emissive colour as an outline which is it's in a very expensive process so I'm not going to show you guys how to make that because it's just it's not very practical um, at all um, this way gets the job done just as well it just doesn't have an outline but you don't really require the outline because you can still clearly see what the objects are you can see that this is a guy and this is a box so the reason that I mentioned the distance earlier was because we can let's see if we go back to our post process volume going to quickly turn it off so now you can see it's not rendering if I create another one and I drop it in somewhere you can essentially make sure that you can only see these at certain times because unless you unbind it if you unbind a post-processing volume then it will work anywhere but if you don't unbind it and you just leave it to, to bound then it will only draw things while you're inside of the volume so you'll notice now there's some green now there's not green now there is now there's not um, it's probably going to be a slightly more oops, obvious if I place this over here if we place it there so you'll notice that if we go around this side, it's not rendering the cube. Once we enter the volume, it will render. And that's why you might not need as much range as I've, I've put. If you are going to use Unbound, then you're going to want quite a large range, um, depending on how big your scene is. Um, but it's all custom. So if we sit here now and we go into our instance, 
This is why we instance it, so that we can just change it as we go. Like, ooh, I like red. Let's try red. We can change the alpha, which determines just how much of it is drawn. 0.5 is nice. And then, just to show you the range, if we put the range down to 1, it's not very good. 100, you still can't see it. Still can't see it. See. The range has to be quite large. There we go. So 800, you can just about see it, but it's cutting off the corner because the range is a bit too, a bit too low. So change that back. Hopefully, this is um, this has been useful for you guys, and it's something that you can you can use. Um, it's a very fun one to put together, it's very cool to, to use and it's quite a nice little thing to have inside of your game if you if you need that kind of thing. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.